I thank all of you. Me, I'm going straight. They've, they've said everything. They've spoken all the English. So the one that I will speak, I don't know which one I'm going to speak now. Now, I want to say that I want to go to straight. We're not going to I and all those who believe in me and those of you who are committed to the interests of the Niger Delta. We're not going to be part of any protest. It's as clear as that. If the, anybody have the right to protest, I also have the right to resist protest. Where you are right, stop. That's where my right begins. I am anti-protest. Uh, people will say that they've given him money. That's why he's talking this way. I am now. Go take your own. Me, I don't take my own. I want to say that me, I have the capacity. I'll be away, away, came in. I have the capacity. If you carry your protest, come near me. You will collect. Those, those who brought anti-SARS protest and went to Obibo, they collected from me Woto Woto. Everybody knows it. The government knows it. The security agent knows it. I gave them Woto Woto. I know be IG or police. If you do anyhow, you go see anyhow. Don't bring your protest here. This protest does not consign us. And anywhere where you are doing your protest, I did that you are doing your protest. I know that you are a threat to me. I will be a threat to you. That is it. I'm not going to romance my words. I'm not going to do CCCC with you. I am not a CC. My name is Mujahid Okubasare, and I'm going to live up to my name, and I will stand firm. I'm not doing it because I'm a Belatini who is going to give me anything. No, I'm doing it because I believe that if I don't do it, my life will be in danger. The life of my children will be in danger. The life of my compatriots, all of you who are here will be in danger. It is wrong for us to be part or even conceive. I don't know if you heard him clearly, but the person that is speaking is Asari Dokbo. He called himself a freedom fighter, an activist, a brief history about him, Asari Lokobo was one of those militants that held the federal government ransom over the resource control in Niger Delta. They kidnapped expatriates and told the federal government that the people in Niger Delta need to control their resources by themselves. He was arrested and incarcerated by the Lusego Basanjo but was released by Yara Dua and he has been supporting or against a government depending on who giving whatever he's asking for. But there was something that Sari Dokubo said that drew my attention, the Angsas protest. You all heard what happened in Obibo, where people were killed and massacred, and the dead bodies were thrown inside the river. Asari Dokubo just openly admitted that he was the one that orchestrated that attack on Obibo. Go and read about Obibo massacre. It was a deadly massacre to date. The government of Yesowiki is still denying what happened in Obibo. But it was all over the news that people were killed in Obibo. And, and the people that were killed were mostly Igbos. Innocent people, innocent young Igbos were killed and they were thrown into river in Obibo. Asari Dokubo just admitted right now in that press conference that was in attendance, the Senate President, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, that he was the one that carried out that attack in Obibu. That's by the way. This is the same man that was criticizing Bola Metinibu. He supported Bola Metinibu for president's campaign for him, even threatening those that wanted to vote for Peter Ruby. Few months after the election, this man was calling out Bola Metinibu for lopsided appointment. He was saying Bola Metinibu is the worst president that this country has ever had. I want you to listen to some of the things he said about Bola Metinibu and ask yourself a very important question. What change? If your people are already angry that this is the worst government, this 
government is against the job people and you want to add fire to petrol? You want to add petrol to fire? This is the worst government. That's the feeling of the job people. If nobody is telling you, as a friend, I will tell you, the job people feel this is the worst government for them. This is a nightmare for them. Ahmed Bola Tinibu is traveling on a different, a very dangerous path. And if he does not correct it and change some of these appointments, even we who are his hardcore supporters will not be able to stand with him. It's up to you. If you feel that you are comfortable now, things are going to be easy now. They tell you that you can do whatever you like. You can do what Buhari or worse than what Buhari did. It is one-sided appointment. So you two can do your one-sided appointment. You are not Buhari. Know that. You are not. Buhari had a cult followership. You do not have that sort of cult followership. If there are cult followers, we are your cult followers. Those people who are now around, benefiting, making appointment, taking decision, they were afraid to stand by you. This was the same man that few months back was berating the president over the hardship in the land, over his lopsided appointment, but now he's now speaking in favor of the president, asking people not to protest against Bolami Etinibu, telling them not to bring their protest to Niger Delta, that if you do anyhow, you will see anyhow, and you will ask yourself what change. You see, people that speak from both sides of their mouth, these are the people that you don't take serious. Asari Dokubo can be likened to someone like Reno or Mokri, Daniel Buala, Donyo Kukwe. These are people that are only after their stomach. Asari Dokubo called himself an activist, but it's obvious that his own activism is just to satisfy his own personal stomach. Whatever he did for Bola Metinibu during the last election was for his own personal gain. But maybe unfortunately he did not get what he wanted for Bola Metinibu. And of course, the contract that was given to Tompolo was what he was eyeing, but Tompolo retained that contract. That is the reason why he came out and started berating the president. And of course, money has changed hand. That is the reason why he's speaking in favor of the president now. But you know one unfortunate thing that happened is that the platform where Asari Dokubo was speaking is a platform where the senior president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was also in attendance. The deputy speaker of the house was also in attendance. There were so many government functionaries that were in attendance in that ceremony. But yet, Asari Dokubo was threatening Nigerians with violence that they should not protest in Niger Delta. In what capacity is Asari Dokubo speaking? What is the position of Asari Dokubo to threaten Nigerians that they should not protest in Niger Delta? And he was being held by the Senate President, he was being held by the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives and other government functionaries that were present there and no one could caution him. On what capacity, I ask again, is Asari Dokubo speaking? This is the kind of rascality that they thrive on. That is the reason why you see they will only support someone that will support their rascality. They will never support a candidate that will bring sanity to the system because they benefit from this rascality. They benefit from the violence. They benefit from the corruption that is going on in the land. But unfortunately, this corruption, whatever rascality they are engaging, is benefiting just a few. That is the reason why millions of Nigerians out there are angry because they are hungry, because they cannot afford to feed them anymore because they cannot afford to buy things in the market. Why? The few allies have cornered the resources of the country for themselves. Nigeria was designed to favor few. Nigeria was designed to thrive on criminality. That is the reason why Nigerians are angry because they want to destroy this level of criminality. But Asari Dokubo and his cronies are threatening Nigerians. Protest is not a crime. 
all over the world citizens they've used protests to drive home their demands nigerians are also planning to use that same protest to drive home their demands they've given the federal government what they intend to achieve with the protest and part of what they've said is that they want you to reduce the cost of governance because the cost of governance is putting a strain on our budget they want you to reverse the first subsidy you are not being transparent with whatever first subsidy you're talking about for is being sold for 1300 when you remove the first subsidy it was being sold for 600 naira why are we buying fuel for 1300 when you say that first subsidy is gone they want the government to fix insecurity. Insecurity is the major reason why we are having food inflation. Farmers can no longer go to the farm. If we have security in our land, farmers will go to the farm and we have enough food to feed ourselves. But rather than government listening to them and trying to meet their demands, the government is busy sponsoring groups upon groups to withdraw from a protest that they are not planning. The government is sponsoring imams to tell northerners that protest is haram. It's sponsoring traditional rulers to tell people not to protest. The government is sponsoring thoughts like we saw in Lagos, thoughts coming out to warn people not to come out and protest in Lagos and it's also sponsoring someone like Asari Dokubo to threaten Nigerians not to come out and protest. In all of this, you have not heard the voice of the president. The president is the chief commander. The president is like a father to everyone in this country. The president has not spoken to address the youth, to address angry Nigerians, to address his people, his children, to tell them to calm down. But rather, they are sponsoring aids to come out and incite Nigerians the more. Because whatever these people are doing is inciting Nigerians the more. And you begin to ask yourself, what kind of a president do we have? What kind of a leader do we have in this country? He doesn't care about the emotions of the people. He doesn't care about the anger of the people. I mean, you are there to represent the people. The people are saying that they are not happy with your administration. The people are saying that they are hungry. The people are saying that you are not doing what they voted you in there to do, even though they did not vote for you. But rather than coming out to address them, you are having non-state actors threatening them not to come out to protest. Who is Asari Dokubo against millions of Nigerians? The government is saying that the protests will be hijacked. The government is saying that the protests will be violent. But yet, the people that will cause violence against Nigerians that want to carry out peaceful protests are there openly declaring violence. And yet, the police, the DSS, is not going against these people. It's not arresting them. If you are looking for people that will cause violence on the day of this protest, you don't have to look anymore. Asari Dokubo is right there in front of your face because he is the one that is threatening violence nigerians are not the one threatening violence nigerians are saying that we are going to hold a peaceful protest they have not threatened to burn any institution they have not threatened to kill anyone they have not threatened to maim anyone the people that have been threatening to kill to maim to destroy they are the people that are being sponsored by the government you saw what happened in lagos where thoughts openly declare war on anyone that will come out to protest therefore why is the security agency not going after these people but yet, they are arresting the people that are planning this protest. You see, if we don't destroy the criminality in this country, this criminality will destroy this country. If we don't destroy these rogue politicians, these rogue politicians will destroy this country. If we don't destroy this rule, these non-state actors that don't want peace in this country, they will destroy this country. But Nigerians, you must hold your fort, you must hold your ground. You will never allow these people to intimidate you. This country belongs to every one of us. Just like Asari Dokubo said, where your right stop is where my own right continues. And I also want to remind him, there is no one that have the monopoly of violence. Asari Dokubo, you do not have the monopoly of violence. All Nigerians are asking is that we need good roads. All Nigerians are asking we need electricity. We need to eat. We need security in our land. We need employment. Reduce the cost of living. That is all Nigerians are asking for. And they want to drive all their demands by protest. Nobody, not even government can stop the people from protesting. It is their fundamental right. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.